about watermelon farming this is your grossist this is your farmer farm with Fred and I would like to take you through uh, some few things in watermelon farming on add how to handle them one we start with the diseases at as you can see the seedlings are very vibrant very healthy and now you need to protect them against uh, all the pests and the diseases so the diseases that attacks at this stage especially when it's uh, very hot and very dry we are attacked by uh, podale mildew and podale mildew in order to identify podale mildew it attacks on the upper part of the leaf on this section of the leaf and it is grayish in color powder it's a gray powder that attacks on this part so in order to, uh, to know all in order to identify what is bothering you all uh, the disease that is uh, that has already attacked you is uh, in, to check this part of the of the seed ring uh, also when in places where it's uh, humid and wet we are attacked by downy mildew. Downy mildew is the opposite of podal mildew because it comes when it's very wet and very humid. You'll check uh, the gray spot under the leaf, gray spot under the leaf. That's what we call downy mildew. And in order to control that, for downy mildew, uh, metal axil and uh, mancozeb can be used to control downy mildew. And for powdery mildew, azoxystrobin, azoxystrobin can be a very good product uh, to control downy mildew. For uh, azoxystrobin, it's a product like uh, Otiva. Those are the products that can be used for downy mildew. Uh, those are the, the two major diseases that may attack this young watermelon as young as it is, because now we need to protect it to protect it against the pests, against the diseases, in order now to have a good plant and a productive plant. From there, there is one major uh, pest that may disturb at this stage, one major pest, and uh, the pest is uh, the mites, or the red spider mite. For you to identify or for you to check uh, the red spider mite, you need to check at the lower part of the leaf, the lower part of the leaf, like uh, this one, you check. And uh, at, at the lower part of the leaf, that's where it attacks. And when it's very dry, in order to get the tips or in order to know whether the, your volley attack, take a dust, like the one I'm holding, pour it on the lower side of the leaf. This just to test whether the, the, the mites have already attacked you. Then tap the leaf. If the dust is left, or you are able to, to see a web-like thing uh, under the leaf. Know that already you are attacked by, by, by red spider mite. For red spider mite control, uh, you can use a uh, abamectin-based product. Abamectin-based product are the best at this stage in order to control, uh, to control the, 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 the mites. Also, there is a, a, a product uh, rich in sulfur can be able to control uh, both uh, red spider mite and can also be able to control uh, 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 podal media at the same time. So you, by use of that product, you'll be hitting the spider mite and the uh, and the you'll be hitting the spider mite and the podal mildew. So, but but. Uh, the product is also not very good because at flowering stage it causes flower abortion, so avoid it at all costs at flowering stage in order to prevent uh, the young seedlings from aborting the flowers. But at this stage when the flowers have not yet come out, you can use the product and it will be an added advantage on your side. Yes, with those few tips on how to manage to prevent the diseases, pests and the diseases, uh remain on this channel if you have any question you can leave it on the comment box subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed so that we can continue learning together bye